excited to be hosting this 31st webinar in our Godre's Storage and Handling Knowledge series. Today's topic is the emergence of cold storages in India. On behalf of Godre's Material Handling, I would like to extend our warm wishes for a prosperous new year to all of you. This is our first webinar of 2023, and we are thrilled to be kicking off this year with such a valuable and informative session. Before we pr proceed to introduce our subject matter expert and esteemed speaker for today, I would like to remind you of the core purpose behind our knowledge sharing platform. As a company, Godrej has been in the interlogistics space for over six decades, and we believe in giving back to the community and industry by sharing the knowledge and experience we have gained over the years. I'm happy to say that the response to our platform has been overwhelmingly positive and has been a great encouragement for us to continue this initiative. Coming to the topic, as the demand for, for frozen and refrigerated goods in India continues to grow with the rise of organized retail sector, food processing and need to reduce food wastage, it is crucial for businesses to have access to appropriate storage solutions that can handle sub-zero temperatures. This webinar titled Emergence of Cold Storage in India will explore the latest developments and trends in the field of cold storage in India and provide valuable advices on how to effectively store and handle goods in these conditions. Today, we will delve into current state of cold storage in India examine the latest trends and innovations and offer practical tips on how to efficiently store and handle goods in sub-zero conditions. And we are going to have a close understanding of this from our eminent speaker, Mr. Abhishek Yadav, Vice President of Operations and IT at Coastman Logistics. Mr. Abhishek, with over 13 years of experience in cold chain operations and IT, brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to the table. He has a diverse background, starting his career in software implementation and moving to operations management, business analytics and business development. His extensive domain knowledge in WMS and IT operations of different ERPs in multiple network topologies and bachelor's degree in computer engineering and an MBA in international business make him an outstanding and valuable speaker. We are excited to have him share his insights and experience with us today. Before I move on, I would request everyone to put in their questions in the chat box on the top right of your screen. We shall try to answer them straight away or towards the end of the session. Please do not forget to write your name in the box above and the Q&A section. That will help us to get back to you after the webinar. In case we miss you, your question. With that, I request Mr. Abhishek to take over and wish everyone has an insightful session. Over to you, Mr. Avishay. Thank you so much, Darshit. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. And as Darshit just told about, this is our first webinar for this new year. So wishing all of you a happy new year. So today we are covering a topic on emergence of cold storage in India and uh, how to store and handle goods in sub-zero condition effectively. So before giving the advisory on the storage and handling conditions, on handling uh, services, I would like to tell you briefly about the Indian cold chain industry, the current scenarios. So the current cold chain industry is a high growth stage industry in India right now. Uh, we are said to be a nascent stage of cold, uh, of cold chain industry. However, the growth rate is tremendous. There are high level of wastages in the farm to fork supply chain due to low, low level of network uh, penetration in the country, specifically on the uh, products that is visible in the shelf, shelf of modern um, retail outlets currently in the India and the agri products as well. The current penetration of TCWs, which is temperature controlled warehouse is, in India is less than 10%, uh, which when we compare with internationally, it is average around 60%. The India's temperature control logistics industry is estimated at 54,000 crore in value by 2024 and growing at a CAGR of 15%. So most of the coal storages in India are mainly catering to the potatoes and onion due to National Horticulture Board subsidy for such storage conditions. Most players in this industry 
are local players or regional player and has got a low level of technology uh, understanding. However, now over the last few years, we are seeing a paradigm shift towards uh, people adopting modern international standard warehouses for their warehousing and refrigerated transportation requirements. <clears throat> This is a summary of the current cold, uh, cold storage scenario of the country. If you see the integrated pack house, there are close to 250 integrated pack house available across the nation. Whereas there is a approximate requirement of around 70,000 pack houses. So you can see a huge gap in this. Similarly, the reefer trucks, the cold storage and the ripening chamber. You would see a gap in all of these categories. This makes cold chain industry a hot topic for government as well as many industry players to invest in the technology and also into the infra so that we can cover up this gap and give the adequate required facility across the country. India is largely diverse into the farm sector and there is a huge need for cold chain Across the, across the nation in different industry sectors. Uh, currently, India is the largest producer of milk, second largest producer of fruits and vegetables, food grains and marine products, and fifth largest producer of meat and meat products, and which you know makes India a player in the international food market, a larger uh, role to play. And there is a specific need for cold chain, uh, clearly with the help of these industry segments. There are several growth drivers driving this requirement of cold chain in the country. Increased per capita income, increased population, high growth of niche industries, entry of many international brands in the country. There are several government initiatives which are uh, you know, given to the players for uh, increasing their cold chain infra. The current population is also accepting changes, organized and increased food processing sectors have increased the perishable exports and imports have increased. So that leads to the overall demand of cold chain being increased in the country at the moment. If you see this map, this map clearly expresses about the geographies for the cold chain intervention in the country. So if you see across a state like Gujarat, where there is high growth demand for fisheries, marine products, dairy, meat and poultry, banana, mango, tomato, onions, in Maharashtra, you could see uh, citrus fruits, tomato, bananas, mango, meat and poultry, dairy. So every state has got some, some or the other uh, industry sector which has got a product which is highly growable over there and which needs the cold chain intervention in the country. Few key, key challenges that we see across the cold chain industry is the supply chain infra gap which I discussed in the previous slide the low capacity utilization, the seasonality of operations, uneven distribution of capacity, growing real estate cost and high initial investment and high energy cost. So when we talk about all these challenges, that makes a player who is ready to invest in cold chain, uh, you know, they, they usually think about whether do we go ahead with investment in the cold chain or not. Because these challenges makes uh, the overall investment looks, the returns of the overall investment looks very dim when people look across all the uh, challenges together. So, uh, you know, you can see the operating costs, the operating costs are increasing day by day. Every year we can see the rise in all the parameters of cost that we incur. Uh, there is lack of logistical support. The real estate costs are going high. And at the same time, we need to ensure our customers uh, expectation towards the pricing also remains uh, you know um, optimal so that leads uh, mainly the cal these all when we put together see the cold chain industry these are the challenges that we face moving on to the advisory so uh, i'm going to share a few advisory for storage and handling in the cold storage so adopt automation we can optimize the complete overall operations and optimize the available cold storage space utilization by all these automations. 
Now there are pallet shuttles, there are automated storage and retrieval systems. There are several IoT based uh, automations to track and trace the inventory, which improves the overall efficiency of the operations. Minimize the heat losses. Uh, heat loss is crucial and uh, to minimize the heat loss, there are several various modern technology available, which helps in minimizing the losses and enhances the energy saving. Example, the heat uh, hot gas defrost technology, the electronic expansion valve technology. We use all these technologies in our cold storages to ensure that uh, the minimum uh, the heat loss is minimal. And new products are regularly entering into the cold storage uh, industry and uh, which you know helps the modern technology helps us to minimize these heat losses. Maintain the temperature ranges. The temperature must be regulated in each and every part of the cold storage unit. And for that, we need to ensure certain parameters like clean the condenser units properly, check the evaporator coils time to time, examine the condition of building, keep an eye on the inside temperature and consider the door design and seals. Now these parameters, when we you know put together, see in an day-to-day uh, -day operations, when we come across all these uh, parameters and when we monitor this regularly, that ensures that our temperature uh, range, whatever we need to maintain to keep the product intact, is properly maintained. Now, uh, these are very specific parameters which I have told. Like cleaning the condenser unit seems a very simpler task. However, if not cleaned properly, there, there could be the debris that can accumulate in the fan and condenser, condenser unit, which can hinder the complete performance of the cold storage. Similarly, uh, when we talk about the design of doors and seals, we need to ensure that for a cold chain infra, the entire chamber is uh, leak proof. And uh, to ensure that we do a lot of uh, thermal imaging within the chamber to ensure there are no gaps or no leaks and uh, the product temperature remains intact. Use the suitable equipments. Now, when I talk about suitable equipment, it doesn't only uh, means to be the machine handling equipments, but also the PPEs. Uh, when we operate in temperature conditions like minus 25 degrees Celsius or minus 20 degrees Celsius, a human uh, body cannot sustain that kind of temperature for a longer period of time. So to ensure our operation does not get comes to a halt, uh, we need to ensure that our operators are given the right right set of PPEs be it the helmets, be it the safety jackets, be it the cold room suits, the cold room shoes. All are these PPEs which are essential to ensure that our manpower is safe in the sub-zero condition and they are able to uh, do the operations efficiently. And also uh, the equipments other than which is required by the manpower, uh, the material handling equipments like BOPTs, restructs, the MHEs, we also need to ensure that you know the right parameters set by the OEMs are followed religiously to ensure that there is no uh, damages or uh, problem arising due to improper handling of those devices in the sub-zero conditions. Example, when these devices move out of the sub-zero condition zone to the anteroom or to a plus temperature, there is a possibility of condensation which can damage or lead to short circuit of the electrical equipments. And we have been witnessing this across uh, several uh, uh, warehouses where we have seen such situations. So I would be sharing you a few MHE related guidelines which we need to, in, uh, when followed, it ensures that there is minimal damages or problems arising to these energies. So any operation requiring products to be stored or handled in sub-zero temperature must have a cold store uh, maintained at a required temperature and an anti-room maintained at temperature suggested by OEMs. This is mainly to ensure that the condensation does not, you know, damages or due to condensation, there is no short circuit in the electrical equipments or electrical circuits in the energies. The higher the anteroom temperature, it leads to more condensation, which will lead to more 
further issues which I mentioned like electrical short circuits or faults. Temperature and humidity level of the cold storage and anti room should be maintained to avoid wetness or formation of ice on the floor. Because uh, we have seen few situations where when there is ice formation on the floor that leads to unsafe operating environment for the MHE. Uh, these MHEs are mainly fitted with the PU wheels and there are chances of slippage of these MHEs and hence we need to ensure that the proper humidity and temperature levels are set in the ante room. Ideally, there should be two set of MHEs, one set with uh, frozen condition, the sub-zero condition mainly, and it can uh, be kept at or parked at the ante room, and another set for uh, the normal ambient condition. So usually in an in a cold chain, uh, in a cold storage, there are different categories of product which require different temperature are stored. Frozen, chilled, ambient. So we need to ensure that the reach truck which is or the forklift or MHE which is being used in ambient temperature should not be used for the sub-zero condition chamber. MHE must not be taken, taken in the wet conditions inside the cold storage. The reason remains the same. Uh, there are chances of electrical faults or short circuits in the main board and uh, when the main board uh, gets damaged or there are chances of uh, uh, complete circuitry damage uh, it's a huge cost to get it uh, you know up and running again so what you can use here is you can use warm air blowers uh, while the product while the mhe when it is in charging or maintenance so that will you know, emit out all the unnecessary uh, droplets or the wet condition. And then by using these warm air blowers, uh, we can ensure that before the MHC enters into cold storage, it is going dry in a dry condition. MHC should not be parked inside the cold store. This is a very critical uh, guideline. I mean, we have seen many places where the MHEs are parked inside the chamber itself in the sub-zero condition. So that is not the ideal way MHE has to be kept. So MHE should be parked in the ante room when it is not in use. And the battery should be charged at a cha charging station placed in ambient temperature. Now, uh, we have come across many situations where people have asked us or uh, during the visits in our warehouses, many customers have asked us, where do you charge your uh, batteries for these MHEs and where do you keep the RTs? So these RTs and MHEs have to be kept in anti room and the battery should be charged at ambient temperature separately and it, it requires the exhaust as well. So the battery changeover, but in the freezer modified MHE should happen in anti room itself. So after the battery is being charged, it has to brought down to the anti room and that's where the battery has to be placed in the anti room itself. Before charging, the battery needs to be warmed up by letting it stay for at least for one hour or more in the ante room. And battery changing trolley should be used. These batteries are heavy batteries, and uh, you know you need to ensure the safety of people carrying it. So always use the changing trolleys uh, before the battery has to be placed into back back into the reach truck. Coming to the occupational health and safety. I have discussed this PPEs earlier as well, and uh, we just need to ensure that whosoever is working in our premises is covered properly with the safety. So whenever any visitor, any uh, person or staff enters the warehouse, the security should brief about the health and safety uh, standards to be followed, the guidelines to be followed when a person is in the warehouse, and they should be provided with the right set of PPEs and insulated coats, pants, gloves, etc. to stay warm inside a cold storage uh, environment. Employees should also be trained to familiarize themselves with the cold working conditions to minimize any health risk to them and also to make sure that they do not compromise the efficiency of operation. And we should conduct the health checkups for all the staffs on a regular set defined frequency basis. So by following all these occupational health and safety guidelines, 
we need to ensure that each and every member available in the warehouse or going inside the warehouse is safe. Keep monitoring. The temperature is the most critical aspect in a cold storage warehouse. So these are the, uh, the temperature is the main CCP. You can say the critical control point. Uh, when you talk about any cold storage or any warehouse which requires the temperature to be maintained for different products. So you should ensure that the temperature and humidity are continuously monitored for all these uh, uh, chambers or the complete warehouse. Uh, there are data loggers uh, which should be kept in chamber which logs temperature every uh, second minute or hour based on the frequency defined by the organization and you should ensure that you know it is being monitored at the central level as well so when there are multiple warehouses for any organization uh, the company should invest into the technology where they can monitor the temperature on a real time basis for all these chambers and every any deviation in or any deviation in the set range of temperature there should be alert which should uh, be monitored or the alert should go to the respective uh, managers or the team who is handling this particular aspect in the warehouse. There are several technologies available for these. There are IoT based technology, there are uh, GPS based technology, there are Bluetooth based sensors which can be placed or installed into chambers and uh, the refrigerated trucks which can emit the data on real time basis to uh, their modems and this, those modems can emit the, or transmit the data to the respective uh, technology or distribution center and the users can view the report accordingly. Always keep the contingency plan. So when we talk about cold storage, we all know that it is heavy machinery that or the refrigeration system that is maintaining the temperature across the cold storage units. You should always keep the backup, uh, mainly the power backup. And in case if the power backup also fails, we should be having a contingency plan in place. How to keep the material safe? So for those uh, contingency plan, you should uh, you know talk to uh, the, the the nearest service providers who can assist you whenever your uh, temperature or your uh, chamber compressor fails. Uh, the contingency plan should be there for the power failures, the MHE breakdowns, the truck accidents, and you need, you need to plan it properly to ensure safety to the man, material, and the asset. Coming to the quality compliance and regulations that you know in uh, we need to uh, follow in cold storage or coal warehouses. Adopting global standard for GWP. Uh, many players, many clients of uh, many clients operating in the cold chain industry have acknowledged the need of the right standards to be followed for keeping the material safe and keeping the uh, hygiene and upkeep of the warehouse. For that purpose, many cold storage companies have started adopt adopting the global standards. Global standard like BRCGS, Storage and Distribution Practices, uh, ISO 22000, HACCP. Uh, these are few standards which people now follow to ensure that every aspect of good warehousing practice is in place. And the service provider is able to give the right required services to its clients. The company, sh you should continuously train your manpower in all these aspects. Maintain the SOPs in adherence to the CCPs, the critical control points which are defined for the operation, mainly to handle the time and temperature sensitive cargos. You should conduct the internal and external audits uh, regularly to ensure the SOPs which is defined and uh, you know uh, told to the warehouses are being followed properly. Few compliances and regulations. 
एफ एस एस ए आई एफ डी सी ए आई सी विच इज एक्सपोर्ट इम्पोर्ट कोड एंड यू यूथ एक्सपोर्ट ओरियंटेड यूनिट द जी डी पी फॉर फार्मास्यूटिकल एंड मेडिसिनल प्रोडक्ट फॉर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड आई ए टी ए विच इज मेनली रिलेटेड टू द एयरलाइन पेरिशेबल कार्गो रेगुलेशन एंड टेम्परेचर कंट्रोल रेगुलेशन दीज आर द रेगुलेशन विच नीड्स टू बी यू नो अधेर टू अधेर बाय द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू इंश्योर दैट द फूड safety is maintained across the chain uh, and the food drug related trucks are uh, being done handled properly and distributed properly so a company should always follow these compliances and regulation to ensure that the right kind of service and um the operational levels are met so i am up for any question and answers for this uh, topic now wonderful like the way you started with uh, the country's uh, situation when it comes to cold storage and uh, funnel down to uh the various needs that means you know uh, a warehouse company or the cold storage uh, company should have and uh, appreciate it sir uh, so we've got uh, several questions i would like to take it uh, so mm -hmm. the first question goes uh, do you feel there will be a rapid expansion or a stagnation in the number of cold store warehouses in india in the coming few years if yes why so so we have seen uh, many clients or many brands now recognizing um uh, the quality need the quality aspects of a modern cold storage and there will be a rapid expansion there are uh, you know uh, the way we have expanded coldman has expanded in last few years we have seen that demand uh, coming in in the country from even tier 2 and tier 3 cities as well okay. so these demands are being driven by lot of growth factors so we definitely see there is a huge potential for this industry to grow and it is definitely going to expand at a, a higher speed great good news for all of us okay the next question is apart from the pp required for the operators are mm -hmm. there any guidelines about what is permissible time for an operator to stay in the cold store area continually so while we you know operate in sub zero conditions we always train our laborers pickers or the staff who is operating under sub zero condition not to be inside uh, the warehouse even though they are wearing the complete protective gears to be okay. more than 20 minutes or 30 minutes okay uh, inside the chamber if it is minus 18 or minus 20 degree uh, temperature chamber we don't uh, you know suggest a person to be within the warehouse for more than 20 30 minutes so for every 30 minutes they should come out and you know let the body uh, breathe and adapt and then again uh, go inside the chamber to perform their operational tasks Correct. and if it is a chilled condition then you can operate up to 30 to 45 minutes okay great okay okay so uh, the next question is are some special anti skid wheels Uh, recommended for MHE to work in cold stores. I mean, from your end. So mainly we use the PU coated wheels, which is provided by the OEMs, and yeah. uh, which are having those features of anti-skid. However, as it is the cold chain environment, um, I told earlier as well, you need to ensure there is no ice formation on the flooring because of condensation. Right. So. Okay. Okay. So the next is. What is the use of dehumidifiers in cold stores? Are they mandatory to have? Uh, the dehumidifiers are not mandatory. It is only required by uh, required by specific products. So okay. those products which are very and humidity levels with the data with the help of data loggers always but it again depends on specific product need at what uh, humidity level or temperature level those product needs to be maintained at 
OK, OK. So the next question is what is expected trend of sub zero temperature in India in near future? Maybe five to ten years. That is what sub zero temperature will have at majority of uh, cold stores in India. They are talking about specific temperature that uh, most of the cold storage uh, cold stores would have in India. OK, so uh, we have seen a lot of shift in uh, the temperature uh, mm -hmm. uh, requirements like. Uh, if you talk about. Five years before we have seen an uptrend in the frozen food consumption. If you talk about now uh, the, the current uh, population, if you see we are moving away from the frozen, we are moving towards which is chilled or you know freshly available brands. There are several brands who are providing uh, products instantly with the help of all these uh, faster growing the hyper delivery uh, companies. So yeah. now now people are preferring the fresh and chilled more. So if we see the future, I think a chilled segment would be or tropical segment would be a segment where there will be more demand coming into the frozen segment will not have that much of demand. But yes, that is also a part of this uh, warehousing industry and it will also be required uh, mainly for a product which can be exported outside or imported which requires a lot of shelf life to be maintained. Those will be the product where uh, frozen demand will come in. But looking at the trend, I see uh, tropical and chill will be a more ratio of uh, product in the warehousing industry. Yeah, so uh, that is around three to four degrees. I mean. Uh, so yeah. there are uh, product requires to be kept between zero to four product okay. to be kept between uh, 10 to 12 or 15 to 25. So these are those categories, children tropical. So out of uh, the total mar market size of cold room, uh, what mm -hmm. is the uh, market size of pharma in particular? Uh, for those, I'll have to, you know, OK. Give you a specific number. I mean, I can always get back. So whosoever has asked the query, uh, you can uh, get the details and I'll answer them. Yes, yes, yes. We have that uh, details. OK, OK, so. Yes, sir. So with this, um, uh, we would like to conclude I mean, and uh, thank everyone uh, to uh, attend uh, you know, this insightful journey. And thank you, Abhishek, sir, for uh, all the all the experience you poured in uh, today and made it short and simple. Um, yeah. And yes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. Very one much. more thing. Yes. And uh, the, I request all the attendees to uh, fill on the feedback form that would help us to, you know, uh, come back to you with new topics. And with this, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you.